Bethune. Right, time for our final number crunch of the series. Let's join Becky and the team now. Becky. Thanks, Jonathan. Yes, welcome to Stevenage. And the last in our series, looking at the challenging economic climate, the Anglia number crunch. Yes. Tonight, the latest revelations from our exclusive opinion poll. Should we be forced to retire at 65 to let more young people onto the jobs market? We'll be hearing your views and we'll also be meeting those who want to work until they drop and those who don't. And our personal finance expert, Michelle Slade, is with us with advice on pensions and retirement. But first, a little bit about where we are tonight. We're at the Astrium Satellite Factory in Stevenage, which designs and builds the high-tech satellites like the ones which are bringing you these pictures tonight. The company employs some 1,500 people here and is at the cutting edge of space technology. Still highly secure, this was a top-secret site. The famous Blue Streak missile was built here in the 50s. It was Britain's ballistic missile system but was later abandoned. Today, the company does work for the military as well as government, scientific and commercial projects, including the ExoMars rover, which will be launched in 2018 to look for signs of life on Mars. Over the past few weeks, we've been exploring how the region has been standing up to this sudden economic jolt to our circumstances. This week, we're looking at the world of work and how actually we might all have to work a little bit longer than we had first been expecting. Of course, that's not entirely down to the economic crisis. It's all down to the fact we're living a lot longer. If we take a look at some numbers on life expectancy, a baby born in the 1920s, well, the average life expectancy then was 57 years, only 57 years. Move on 40 years to the 1960s, and the life expectancy had risen to 71. And a baby born today, well, they have a life expectancy of 78 years. And in the Anglia region, it's even longer than that. We're now living 25 years longer than when the state pension was introduced over a century ago. So back to the current economic crisis and our YouGov opinion poll. We asked whether you expected to have to retire later because of the current financial crisis. And 57% of you did expect to have to retire later. But when it comes down to the specifics of retirement in the future, well, then the answers become a whole lot trickier, as we'll find out in just a second. Incidentally, this down here is a mock-up of the Beagle lander that went off to Mars seven years ago. Here at Astrium in Stevenage, they're looking to the future. Communications, satellites and missions to Mars. Bruno here is a prototype Mars rover, and they've recreated the surface of the red planet here at Astrium. We also asked you to look towards the future and your retirement, the hows and whens. And when we asked, well, some of the answers were quite conflicting. For instance, when we asked if forcing people to retire at 65 was ageist and discriminatory, well, not surprisingly, 72% of you agreed with that. But turn the question on its head and ask if some jobs aren't suitable for older people, should employers be allowed to make them retire? Well, 64% of you agreed with that too. And there was a struggle with our other questions too. For instance, 58% of you thought that if older people stayed in work, it would make it harder for younger people to get jobs. While 72% of you said it would be a good thing for people to stay in work longer because there would be fewer people claiming benefits and more people to pay tax. Overall, it would help public finances. So we may be working longer and perhaps having multiple careers. But do we want to? Well, it seems some of us want to work until we drop, but others want to put their feet up and retire as early as possible. As Elodie Harper found out. The idea that a job's for life now looks as dated as these workplaces from the 1970s. But we can expect that work may soon be for life. All positive for 71-year-old Anthony Smallhorn, who works at this Cambridgeshire B&Q. Very simply, I need the money and I thoroughly enjoy working. I still lift any of the biggest boxes in this place and drive a thing called the Genie. So I'm quite sure most 70-year-olds who want to go on working will be able to do that as well. Or even 90-year-olds, like 91-year-old Dennis Morley from Northamptonshire, who's celebrating being Sainsbury's oldest employee. I retired and uh, I looked after my wife till she died and then uh, thought I'd better do something. So I came and they, put, they gave me a job. I'll just keep going. At this Norfolk exercise class, people also want to enjoy their later years. 
but that doesn't involve working till they drop. Everyone here may be retired, but nobody could be accused of not staying active. But people in the East who are younger will have less time to enjoy their retirement, as the age we can retire is rising to 66 in 2020. I think it should stay as it is, to be quite honest. But to me, that is, that is the age you should retire. 65 men, 60 for women. People have worked long enough, 60 years old. Waiting longer to draw the state pension is a worry for older job seekers. 51-year-old Patricia Pearson from Great Yarmouth took a career break to have children while her husband Frank supported them. But eight months ago, he lost his job. Now neither can find work. He's applying for jobs, um, so 20, 30 jobs a week, and most of them he doesn't even hear back from. If the, the work was out there, um, well, I wouldn't have any concerns about working to 66. It's unsurprising the Pearsons are struggling. Once out of work, it's harder for over 50s to find a job. After three months of unemployment, less than 20% of over 50s found work. But double that number of people aged 25 to 34 found work in the same period. To encourage businesses to retain older workers, the government abolished the statutory retirement age of 65. But lawyers say this could force employers into sacking older workers. We envisage a, an increase in tribunal claims because the main reason for dismissal will then be on grounds of incapability. As a result, uh, you're going to end somebody's uh, employment, employed life um, on a negative. And younger job seekers fear more workers staying on past 65 will mean fewer jobs. Older people, they've, they've had their work and life and I think it's time for younger people to be able to start theirs. In the East, more people over 50 are in work than in the rest of the UK. 68% of 50 to 64-year-olds are employed, compared to 64% nationally, and 8% of over 65s are working, also higher than the national figure. And many employers, like Dennis Morley's manager, say older workers bring benefits. The older generation have been able to provide us with um, some of their experiences and actually fit our clientele as well. We employ about just over 400 people and um, you know, just over about 100 of them are over 50 and you know, around about 40 so are over 65 as well. At 104, Jack Chase from Caister in Norfolk is Britain's oldest elected councillor. He has this advice. The secret is enjoying work. Whatever I did, I, I, liked, I liked working. Wherever I went... I actually work professionally uh, till I was 90. So do you think you'll ever want to retire? Well, I've got so much to do, really. For Jack Chase and Dennis Morley, working past 90 is a pleasure. Many hope it won't one day be a necessity. Elodie Harper, Anglia News. Well, if you've just joined us, welcome to the final edition of our series of special programmes, The Anglia Number Crunch, where we're looking at the impact of the government's spending cuts on the Anglia region. We're at the Astrium Satellite Factory in Stevenage, which is at the forefront of space technology and a big provider of jobs in the region. And with me is Richard Peckham, Astrium's UK Director of Business Development. Richard, thank you for allowing us to take over your site today. Um, you offer apprenticeships, you sponsor university students. Do you find that the skills are out there for a business such as yours? We do. Um, getting good people is key to our future and something we take very seriously. We work very closely with our local schools and universities. We take on about 30 graduates a year, 15 apprentices, but we do get good people. How do we compete with America in space technology? Well, it's quite a competitive environment. It's quite tough. The US trying to do everything from manned space flight, big military programs, big NASA programs. We've had to focus, particularly in commercial telecom satellites. And for an ex as an example, we're launching a satellite called Hylas. It's going to be direct to home, first uh, one for uh, broadband in the UK. Would you say the future is high tech? Uh, definitely. Uh, the space sector has been growing at 9% per annum for 10 years. We expect that growth to continue um, into the future. And for every pound invested in satellite infrastructure, there's about £10 worth of, of downstream business created in the applications of, of satellites. Very quickly, what do you do for the Anglia region? Well, we employ 1,500 people here. We spend uh, several hundred million pounds in the UK and suppliers a lot in this region. Uh, and we work very closely with the, the local schools and universities. Richard, thank you very much for joining us. Later in the programme, we'll hear your views and we'll have expert advice on how you can prepare for retirement. But now it's back to Jonathan in the studio with the rest of the day's news.